Hello friends, this video on why do we fall ill part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Okay, so with this I think we have discussed a lot about what are infectious diseases, how are they caused, what are the agents that cause these diseases, how they spread from one person to another and how they enter our body and affect inside our body. So now let us look at some of the treatments. How do we treat these infectious diseases? We will not talk about the exact treatments. I mean, we will not talk about the treatment for each specific disease. We are going to talk about the principles which are followed to treat these diseases. So basically, there are two principles which are followed to treat an infectious disease. First one is reduce the effects. Effects means Whenever a disease happens, as I mentioned, as soon as there is an infection inside your body, inflammation will occur. That means the cells of the body will start fighting back. So as a result, you will get some symptoms like fever, pain and swelling, right? So the first thing is the one way to treat is to reduce these effects. You can take medicines which can reduce this pain or which can reduce the fever or you can take some rest to conserve some more energy because if you conserve some more energy, your immune system can utilize that energy to fight back with more strength, right? So you can do all these things, support your immune system, right? So that is one way of treating it. The other way of treating it is kill the cause. So in the first case, you would have seen that sometimes you have headache and you take a painkiller and the pain goes off and after some time you feel perfectly fine. That's because firstly, since you took a painkiller, so your pain went off. But the cause which actually created that pain, you didn't do anything to that cause. So what is happening? That pain is because the cells inside your body is actually fighting with the cause of that pain. Now as a result, you take painkiller, the pain goes off. After some time, you don't have any problem because your immune system has won the fight. That is why you did not suffer from any disease. But sometimes it also happens that even though you took a painkiller, after some time, you again feel the same pain. That's because even still then the fight is going on. And maybe if the immune system gets defeated, then you end up suffering with some disease. Right? The second one is kill the cause you do not do anything with the pain and all you directly hit the microbes which are causing that disease so one example is when you take antibiotics what happens those antibiotics actually go and they kill the microbes so when it is a bacterial infection you take an antibiotic so which will directly kill the bacteria similarly if it is an infection due to some other microbe you have specific medicines for that so the doctors will know about the detail of those medicines which are specific to each microbe and they will prescribe you those medicines which can kill the microbes so in this case you are actually killing killing the cause and that is how you are treating the disease. So these are the two principles of treatment which are followed to treat an infectious disease. Right? Okay. So that was all about treatment of a disease. Now what about prevention of a disease? We, we all know the proverb, right? Prevention is better than cure. Why is prevention better than cure? That's because when you get a disease, the first thing is that you have to suffer the disease. The sufferer will have a bad time when he is suffering from the disease. He will remain bedridden, he will not have energy, he will not feel like doing anything. Right? So it is a bad time for the patient. At the same time, the disease can have, if, the, if it is a major disease like typhoid or tuberculosis or things like that so even if the disease is cured the patient will remain weak for a very long time so he will take a very long time to come back to a healthy state sometimes they do not even come back to a very good health right so there are some major setbacks and last but not the least is that a person who is suffering from a disease can become a source of infection for many other person. Suppose if one person is suffering from typhoid, there is a good amount of possibility that he can spread the disease to many other persons. So that is why it is always better to prevent diseases. Now what are the principles to prevent diseases? How can we prevent infectious diseases? Now again there are two ways of preventing diseases. 
one is a general way of preventing disease that means any kind of infectious diseases can be prevented and that's next one is specific ways of prevention that means these ways of prevention are very specific to a particular disease so since it is very specific to a disease so they are called specific ways of prevention the first one they are general to all infectious diseases so they are called general ways of prevention now when we talk about the general ways of prevention the first thing is prevent exposure to microbes that means try to avoid ways by which microbes can enter your body now how can you prevent these you can prevent the exposure to microbes only when you know how microbes can enter your body so while we were discussing about the means of spread we talked about the ways how microbes can enter your body it can enter your body by direct contact with somebody by through air through water so what all can you do avoid overcrowded living conditions so if it is overcrowded that means there are too many people living in a small area now when there are 10 people living in a very small area if one of them gets cold or and he starts sneezing or coughing what will happen there will be high chances that you will get that disease because it is overcrowded and as i mentioned in that slide that when a person sneezes the area around him even up to a distance of 4 meters it is all infected right so if you live in a very overcrowded um, area it there is a good amount of possibility that microbes will enter your body so you should avoid overcrowded living conditions clean drinking water needless to say that you should take care of water because water is again a means of spread for many severe diseases public as well as individual hygiene this also i mentioned in the very first slide because if you maintain cleanliness in your locality if you maintain cleanliness in your life it will prevent microbes because when these mosquitoes which causes these diseases like malaria or cholera azar they generally breed in stagnant water so if you keep water at if you store water at a particular place for a very long time you will see insects flies and mosquitoes coming there right so you should prevent all such things the next thing is proper nourishment and food to keep the immune system strong enough that means you should take proper food so that you remain healthy healthy means you should have a strong immune system because if your immune system is strong there is a good possibility that you will not get diseases very often because every time there is an infection your immune system is strong so the immune system will always win the fight between the microbes and your body so when your immune system wins you do not get any disease so always try to get proper nourishment and proper food try to do some exercises and yoga because all these things actually help you to build a strong immune system right so now let us look at the specific ways of prevention how can we prevent some specific diseases so one of the most important ways is vaccination so we will talk about vaccination in the next few slides what is vaccination actually thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again